there again. Happy New Year. Uh, we've got a new year ahead of us. Uh, obviously, you know, it is, uh, it's going to be interesting to see how 2023 goes. Uh, you're going you're gonna to need to stay in prayer. You're going to need to stay uh, uh, faithful to the Lord and, and keep things going, brethren. Time's getting short. Amen? Uh, for the last several weeks, we've been discussing the topic on, uh, of knowing God. Uh, if you weren't here, then certainly I think Brother Michael has probably got uh, recordings of it if you're interested, but there are several messages on, on knowing God and, and trying to, just different aspects about God, things that you and I uh, need to know about, about our Savior. Uh, this week I'm kind of continuing that theme, and, or at least along that line of thinking, but I'm shifting the, the focus to some other things that you and I should know. I do not know how long it will take. We'll have to kind of get into it and give it a try, and, and we'll see what happens. Um, I guess it'll take uh, a couple of weeks, the way I have things planned right now. But uh, today is uh, January 1st, 2023. I can't, I, I can't believe it's 2023. I showed these slides last week just about, uh, you know, the basic breakdown of the time frame in the Bible, and we looked at... Uh, the time when uh, the church gets raptured and the judgment seat of Christ uh, happens up in heaven and then the second coming, the second advent uh, at, at the end of that seven-year tribulation period. And as we uh, spoke last week, brethren, if, if our calendar is anywhere near close, we're on that seven-year threshold of, of a 2,000-year time frame uh, being complete. Amen. I don't know exactly how far off our calendar is, but, uh, and I don't know how long it'll be until the Lord comes back for his church, but I do know that I'm looking for it now more in 2023 than even I did in 2022, all right? At the very least, we're one year closer, all right? So regardless of, of how the, the dating works out, we're, we're one year closer, and the reality is, as you look at things, we're kind of running out of good guesses. <laughs> I mean, back in 86, some guy came up with 80, uh, uh, 80, 88, 88 reasons why the rapture was going to happen in 1988. And he had, you know, all kinds of reasons of why it was going to happen. We were all excited back in 1988, and it didn't happen. Then, of course, you hit the millennium, the, the two, Y2K and 2,000 years, and everybody was all excited and all, all right? I, I just ran across an article that said, somebody said it was going to be September 19th of 2022. Well, that didn't happen either, <laughs> right? Um, but I know this, so we're running out of dates, but we are getting closer. Uh, so keep that, you know, keep that in mind, because more now than ever, Christians, we need to be faithful, we need to be mindful of, uh, of one another, and we need to be mindful that the Lord could come back at, at any minute, amen? Um, I would like to say, you know, watch out, because uh, 1 Peter uh, uh, 5.8 says this, as we get closer and closer to, to the day when the Lord comes back to get us, uh, obviously the pressure is going to be turned up on us from the enemy, right? Uh, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about, what? Seeking whom he, he may devour. You and I, folks, we have to look out because... Um, our enemy is out to get us. It says in 2 Corinthians 2, 11, uh, 2 11, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we're not ignorant of his devices. And he's looking to get an advantage. Amen? He's, he's looking to get an advantage. He is out to get us. He's looking to devour us. The good news in all that is we are not ignorant of how he does it. We're not really ignorant of his devices. The Bible tells us some things about the devil. Uh, you know, the Bible gives us light on Lucifer, the light bearer. Uh, it lets us see what Satan is like and who he really is. So just like we took a little bit of time to, uh, to look at knowing God, I want to take some time to, to, to look at knowing the devil. Now, I don't want to give him anywhere near the amount of time the Lord got, so I'm going to try to get his done in one week. <laughs> Amen? Uh, it's not that I want to talk about him, it's just that we have to know about him. So, I titled the message this, uh, this week, 
uh, simply knowing, knowing the devil. Uh, let's go ahead and bow for a word of prayer. Father, I thank you again for an opportunity to be back here uh, in this church with these people. Lord, you know that uh, we are sinful men, sinful women, and Father, we fall far short of what we ought to be as Christians. But Father, you're a great God. You're patient, long-suffering, and you're interested in watching us uh, struggle and strive and grow. And Father, you're interested in our successes and our failures. So pray that uh, as this new year begins, uh, that you would once again watch over, take care of, minister to your people. Uh, Father, give us a, a clear vision of where it is that we're headed. I pray that uh, we'd not uh, uh, fall prey to the devil in 2023. It's too close to your coming back. Father, we want to be found faithful and hear those words, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Uh, so pre please help us with that. Strengthen us and encourage us. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. Now, as you know, uh, you know, I, I'm known and I, I love the martial arts. And many of the martial arts sayings, you know, the old Confucius sayings, uh, are, while they're not scripture, at least sometimes there's some wisdom in some of them. Amen? Uh, and I'm thinking about, you know, I was thinking along the lines of, uh, of the devil and our, our enemy. And one of, the, one of those sayings is this. Uh, when you know your enemy and know yourself, uh, or know your enemy and know yourself, and you can fight a hundred battles without disaster. There's some wisdom in that. There really is. If you don't know what your enemy is going to do, it's pretty easy for them to get the advantage over you, right? If you don't know yourself, if you don't know your weaknesses, your strengths, and that sort of thing, it's pretty easy for an enemy that does know you to get the advantage over you, all right? Know your enemy, know yourself, and you can find 100 battles without disaster. Not by any stretch of the imagination Bible, but obviously there's some good things to, lessons to be learned by that saying. Not all... Oriental or Confucius or whoever came up with them, uh, uh, Sun Tzu, right? Not all martial arts saying are applicable in Bible-believing realms. When talking about your enemies, one of the martial arts saying is this. To know your enemy, you must become your enemy. Well, that may be good in the martial arts world, but that does not work with the devil, <laughs> right? In fact, if you try to follow that, you'll be doing exactly what the devil wants and you will lose the battle. Um, so that, that doesn't work. It, it might have some application, speaking of worldly things, right? As far as understanding your enemy, that was the concept it was trying to get across. But spiritually, uh, that does not work. Uh, there are, however, people in this world that try it. Unfortunately, far too many. There's a, a gentleman, his name is um, uh, Axel uh, Rosales. He is from Argentina, and he, uh, he set the Guinness Book World of Records uh, back in 2012, I guess it was, for the most piercings on his face. Yes, on the day that they were to be counted, he had 271 piercings on his face. Well, that wasn't sufficient for him. He actually brought his, whatever you call them, piercer, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> thank, I'm, thank, I'm thankful that I don't know. Uh, he actually brought the guy with him, and he decided he wanted a nice round, even number. So he got nine more to make an even 280. I got that off the screen real quick because I didn't want you to think about it too often. <laughs> or too long. But, but the reality is, folks, uh, some people, some people fall prey to the devil, right? Um, and, and at the very least, this guy sure looked like he'd made some of those decisions, right? Well, you and I need to know the enemy so that we don't fall prey to the devil. Now, I know none of you are going to wind up getting all that, that kind of piercing done with your face. I hope. <laughs> Just kidding. But, um, um, <clears throat> but again, uh, you know, 2023, the Lord's coming back. The devil's turning up the pressure. And I hope the Lord comes back soon. And that is what I'm concentrating on. 
I'm, I'm thinking about when he comes back on his white horse, and I know the sword comes out of his mouth, but we come back with him, and, and I, I, I try to keep that vision in my mind. Amen? That's the vision you and I ought to have in our mind. Now, uh, I'm going to start by covering something that is going to hurt a little. Um, I'm well aware of it. There's, there's really no reason or no way around it when you go down this subject and I realize that I'm taking a, a calculated risk. And I'm doing it on purpose. Yes. So get ready. Um, the first thing that you need to know about the, d- the devil, ladies and gentlemen, is this. The devil is full of pride. Amen? Uh, it says in Ezekiel 28, it says, Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. All right, we're talking about knowing the devil. Well, what is one of his chief characteristics? Pride. Right? That's what started the whole mess. Uh, what is What is pride? Right? What is pride? Well, handy dandy, uh, you know, Webster's 1828 definition uh, inordinate self esteem. Inordinate means irregular or excessive. All right? So there's, there's self esteem, but then there's inordinate self esteem. That is pride. It's something that is uh, excessive. Here is a. a, a Another definition, an unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority. Pride, right? That's what the devil was full of. An unreasonable conceit of one's own superior, of, uh, of one's uh, own superiority. I'm right and everybody else is wrong. Maybe you are. Maybe you better check. There may be a chance that you are, but you better you better check. Um, listen, uh, another definition of pride is this: is an inordinate uh, self-esteem, an unreasonable conceit of one's own superiority, which manifests itself in. This is how you detect it. This is how you see it. This is all one definition in Webster's. In lofty airs, lofty, you're high, puffed up. Uh, Distance, yeah, you kind of get off by yourself. Why? (laughs) Because nobody else is good enough to be around you. Reserve, often in contempt of others. Pride, full of pride. Turn to Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 14, if you will. Isaiah chapter 14, which is the other famous passage of, uh, of Scripture on, on Satan. Uh, take, a look at, um, take a look at Isaiah 14. Uh, take a look at verse 12. Take a look at verse 12. Again, familiar passage of Scripture with, for most of you, but it is something to think about when we think about the devil. You, you have to start here. There's no way around it. Uh, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend unto heaven, into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Amen? Pride. That's what started, right? The devil devil is worried about where he's at. Right? The devil wants to exalt himself. The devil wants a higher position above God. Lucifer said this, he said, I'm better, stronger, wiser than God, and I can take him. That's what he's thinking. Right? I mean, why risk? Why risk going against God unless you think you can take him? 
Lucifer sat down there and thought this, I can do, I can do better. I can do what he does better. Turning uh, back to Ezekiel chapter, uh, Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Again, the second uh, most famous passage, we looked at one of the verses, but Ezekiel 28, uh, verse 2, the Bible says, The Son of Man, say unto the Prince of Tyrus, and the, and the, and the Lord is talking to, to addressing Satan in the person of, of Tyrus. It's kind of a dual purpose uh, type of thing going on here. Um, the Bible does that all the time, just in case you're a little bit confused about that. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God, I sit in the seat of God, in the midst of the uh, seas, yet thou art a man and not a God, though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. And then it goes on a little bit later, take a look down in verse 11, moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, so son of man... Take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So you might be thinking, hey, this is just to a, a king, a man on the earth. And it is written to a man on the earth. But there's a dual application. Look at the next verse. Thou hast been in the, gar in the garden of God. That's the devil. Garden of Eden. Right? Right? So that's how you know there's an a, second a secondary application. I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Listen, the devil, ladies and gentlemen, walked around with God. Right? I mean, he was there with him in the beginning. He walked around with him. He had fellowship with him. Look at verse 15. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in, there, in thee. The devil started off right. Right? The devil started off perfect. He started off right. Verse, 20, uh, verse 16. By, by the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled uh, the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the mouth of God, and I will destroy thee, the, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thy heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Listen, uh, there, was, uh, there were some certain things that were given to Lucifer, to Satan, when he was created. He was created perfect. He was given a lot of things, and those things were very valuable, and those things were very great in him, and he was a musical instrument, and he was perfect in beauty, and he had wisdom, you know, far exceeding Daniel. He's, he was second to God. That's what he was. But it was because of those things that he got lifted up in pride. Amen. How many professional athletes do you know get caught in this trap? Yeah. Right? They're given some things that they're really, really, really good at, and it... Yeah, you know who that is, right? Yeah, yeah, technically he was found innocent. But then he still wound up in jail because that pride got to him and he just couldn't let things go and he had to keep going. Didn't he wind up in jail for stealing his Heisman Trophy back? Yeah, I think that's what he, I think that's what he ultimately wound up in jail for. But, uh, but again, you see that in professional athletes all the time is they're, they're very gifted, very talented, and they get lifted up and it, it is a mess. Right? Remember that in, in, um, in Saul? Yes. King Saul, right? In 1 Samuel 15, Saul said unto Samuel, Yes, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me. Yes, I did it right. But yet he didn't. He was king. Right? He's lifted up. So the first thing that you and I need to know about the devil is the devil fell because of pride. And there's a little bit of that remnant because of the fall of mankind in all of us. And every one of us is subject to pride. Amen. All right? What do, you, what do I need to know about Satan? I need to know that, hey, he uses that. He knows what that's all about, and he's going to try to get it in me. Amen? Next thing you need to know about the devil is this. The devil puts things in your heart. Amen? It says in John uh, 13, again, uh, the Last Supper context, the supper being ended, the devil having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, 
Simon's son to betray him. Again, what are we talking about? We're talking about knowing the devil. How does he work? How does our enemy work? You know what the devil does? The devil looks down and saw some things going on, some good things going on, those apostles there, the Lord getting ready to be crucified, and the, and the devil goes down and he puts something in the heart of one of them. And Judas Iscariot falls for it. Right? Listen, you, you can think what you want. This is, this is strictly my opinion. I don't think Judas fell just because of the money. I don't think the 30 pieces of silver was enough to cause him to betray the Lord. There's more to it than that. Amen. Right? There is more. I know he's the one with the bag, and I know he was concerned about the money, and I'm sure that, that certainly played a factor in it. But there is much more going on in, in Judas' mind than just 30 pieces of silver. The devil got in there and was able to put something in his heart. <laughs> and that thing welled up and ate at him and ate at him and he thought about it and he thought about it. And next thing you know, that 30 pieces of silver was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back. Okay. Yes. All right? Uh, the devil put that into the heart. I imagine, and again, strictly opinion, just I imagine Judas probably thought he was doing the right thing. Amen. There was probably just enough doubt in his mind that he thought he was standing up for the tradition of the elders, forefathers. That probably had a part to do it. Again, just a guess. I think back to uh, Genesis chapter 3 and Eve. What happened there? The devil goes down and meets with Eve and begins to talking with her and just starts putting a few things in, in her ear and it works its way through her brain and down to her heart. Next thing you know, she wants to be like God's. He did the same thing with Eve that he did with Judas. How does the devil work? Well, I, I know how the devil works. and The devil's going to get to me by pride. He's going to start whispering in my ear and that thing's going to go down into my heart and I'm going to begin to dwell on it and think about it like Eve did that tree. When the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant uh, to the eye, the tree desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. That's how he works. 2023, ladies and gentlemen, he's going to try to work over you and me. Amen. And this is what he's going to do. It's not rocket science. You say, I'm immune. Okay, good for you, because I'm not. Right? Amen. Yeah. Hey, oftentimes, oftentimes, more often than not, I, I didn't think about it long enough to decide whether I wanted to use the word always, but it's probably pretty safe using the word always. It's a choice that we make. Yes. Right? It is a choice that we make. That pride lifts up, the devil begins to whisper in our ear, that begins to fill our heart. At some point in time, we've got to make a choice. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2023, listen, the devil's going to kick that pressure up. And you better be careful. <laughs> you better be careful. Judas thought he was right. Eve thought she, she, Eve thought she was right. You and I are going to think we're right. I'm just saying, it's, it's worthwhile to be careful. Why? Because this is how the devil works. And none of us are immune to it. Amen. Right? Judas walked with the Lord for three and a half years. And he fell prey to it. How much closer to God can you get than walking with him physically for three and a half years? And partaking and, and doing the miracles and doing the signs and doing the wonders and being a part of everything. He had that, he, I mean, he talk about, you know, we, for, we walk by faith, he walked by sight. And the devil was still able to get to him. Right? How many characters in the Bible? I, I, we don't, tell, hey, we don't tell, have time. How many characters in the Bible can you go through? Good characters. And the devil was able to get to them. Yeah, over and over. What makes you think you and I are any different? Do you really think we rise to the status of David? Or quite frankly, Solomon? 
Uh, he was a pretty wise dude, at least in my opinion. The devil was able to get to him. Right? Um, you know, you need to know that the devil is, is, is full of pride and that he'll, when he attacks us, he'll use us, he'll use that, put that in our head to make us fall just like he did. Amen. All right. Another thing about the devil you need to know. The devil, uh, uh, the devil not only does he use that pride, it fills your heart. But listen, uh, the devil is around, in and around the righteous. You know, sometimes we get the mistaken idea the devil is way off somewhere else and, you know, he wouldn't be interested in showing up, you know, amongst Bible-believing Christians. Oh, no, he's very interested in it, right? Um, Jesus answered them, have I not chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? <laughs> yeah, the devil's right in the midst of us. You say, is he here today? Uh, if, you, if you say no, you're crazy, Right? Now I'm hoping, counting on the Lord being here too to balance that out and that, that we can listen to him instead of the devil. But, but the devil shows up around the righteous, folks. Um, you know, that's definitely one way that he works. Uh, you know, he shows up in plain sight. It says in, in, uh, in Luke, um, in Luke 22, then entered Satan into Judas, surname Iscariot, being one of the twelve, right? Uh, there was like an entrance sign on, Jesus, on Judas's uh, back that said, hey, enter here. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe it was an earring. Hey, enter here. I don't know how that works out. But Jesus, G Judas was sitting around with the other eleven. He was with the Lord. He was with the, uh, the apostles. He was having a meal with them. A few seconds later or a few minutes later, Boom. The devil entered him. First Peter 5, 8, we look at that verse. It'd be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walketh about seeking what? Whom he may devour. Walking about. All right? In, uh, in Matthew 16, you, you know the verse 23, but he turned on and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Satan is right there in connection, if not inside Peter. Oh, yeah, the, the, devil's, the devil's trick is he's around the righteous. Right? How about this one? Zechariah 3, and he showed, me, uh, he showed me Joshua, the high priest. The high priest, of all things, the high priest. Standing before the angel of the Lord. And Satan standing at his right hand. Oh yeah, how does the devil work? Well, right in amongst us. With the high priest. You say, hey, that's you. I know. I got to know that. I have to be aware of that. Right? He's right with us. Got to be careful. Not, a, not, a, you know, not only is he, gonna, is he going to be uh, in and around us, but he appears, he appears as an angel of light. Yes. Amen. And people often mistake him for righteous. What are we talking about? I'm talking about knowing our enemy. The, the 2023, the devil's going to turn up the heat. We're getting closer and closer to the Lord's return. I got to know how he operates. This is how he operates. This is how he's always operated. I got to watch. I'll tell you another thing about the devil. Uh, the devil likes to provoke. Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. You remember the story? King's not supposed to number Israel. God said, don't worry about it. I'll take care of how many people you have. All right? This is Bob's version. <laughs> Bob's condensed version. All right? I'll take care of it. Don't worry about it. I'll, I'll, I'll keep count of how many people you had. I know how many hairs are on their head. It's not a problem for me. And David got to worrying about it, got to thinking about it, and that, uh, you know, something whispered in his ear, and he wanted to know. And, of course, he decides to, uh, to number the children of Israel, um, and, and he calls in Joab, and Joab goes, whoa, 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 big boy there. I know you're the king, but uh-uh, no, not a good idea. And he says, uh, you know, hey, listen, uh, go number them anyway. Right? What was that? Do you, really, do you really think David was that interested in how many people were out there? I mean, did that really change his day? 
Did he change his retirement plan based upon the number of citizens he had in the, in the you know, uh, in the nation at that point in time? No. Something got in there. Something got in there and it nagged at him and it pricked at him and, and it, it, the devil provokes. And it wasn't really, honestly, ladies and gentlemen, it really wasn't even that important, was it? But it was that nagging, that provoking, that, you know, that, that, uh, that constant, that drive. The definition of provoke is to call to action. <laughs> you get somebody to do something, right? You get somebody to do something. Now, this trouble starts, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, it starts at any one of these stages, but the trouble comes when the devil starts using two or three or four of these things in combination against us at the same time. You say, I'm a Christian, I'll never fall for that. Yeah, you're a fool. All right? When two and three and four of these things begin to happen to you at the same time, hey, listen, man, you're, the chance of you making, out, making it out unscathed, pretty, pretty slim. He begins to lift you up in pride. He begins to put things down in your heart. Uh, you know, little things at first, but then they grow. And he does that when you're around good people and you think you're safe. And then he begins to provoke you Call you to action. Hey, how about this? Hey, what are you going to do about that? If I were you, I'd do this. Provoke. That's how the devil operates. And you know what? You, don't, we, you and I don't get to fight a battle on one front. Man, the devil attacks us from multiple fronts in multiple ways and tries to find any niche in your armor he can to get the point across. That's how he works. All right? And when you begin to roll those things around in your mind and you begin to think about those things, watch out because the devil's just looking for the right opportunity to begin the provoking process, the call to action. I'll tell you another thing about the devil. The devil attacks the innocent. Right? Um, now there was a day when the sons of God came to prevent themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. You know the passage. Job. Was Job unrighteous? No, he wasn't. Was Job righteous? Yes, he was. And the devil looked, looked for somebody that was, was innocent, and he attacked the innocent. Now he'll attack the guilty, too. But man, just because you're doing right doesn't mean you can't be attacked. All right? You can bring up uh, uh, all kinds of example. The devil, you know, the devil looks for strong targets. Uh, the, you know, in, in verse 9, Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. So Satan went forth in the presence of the Lord. So there's Job, or there's a devil. He's looking down at Job, and Job is innocent. But not only is Job innocent, Job is a strong man. Let's say, let's say a strong Christian. And the devil goes, hmm, that's the one I'm after. Let me get him. Right? And in Luke 22, Luke 22, the, the Bible says this, the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. What's he looking for? He's looking for a strong target. Right? Peter's just trying to follow the Lord and do right. But the devil's looking to get him. The devil also looks for weak targets. Right? Right? Weak targets. It says uh, in, in 1 Timothy, not a novice, thus being lifted up with pride, he fall into the, combina uh, the condemnation of the devil. Right? A guy that's not ready for the battle. He looks for a weak target. Uh, it says in, uh, in 2 Timothy, 
and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who what? Who are taken captive by him at his will. What is that? Hey, that's a Christian who's fallen back, or, or a lost person, but a, but a Christian who's fallen back, and the, devil's, the devil goes, this is an easy one. I don't even have to, to, you know, to pull up two or three or four different attacks. I'll just use, eh, I'll just, I'll just pr pr provoke him. That'll get him. I'll just whisper in his ear. That'll get him. Hey, the devil doesn't care if you're strong or weak. He's, he's just looking to attack you. Right? In his mind, he goes, eh, that's easy. Hey, how is it, how easy is it for the devil to get to you or me? Right? In 2023, let's not be an easy target. Okay? I know that doesn't, you know, it's about like the COVID vaccine. It doesn't get immune, it doesn't immunize you from COVID. In fact, just a little Bible is much better than the vaccine, but that's another story. At least you got some chance of resisting, right? Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. But, but, uh, but in 2023, let's be aware of what the devil's trying to do because he's trying to do that, ladies and gentlemen, to all of us. And if you look at the numbers in the world out there and how Christian, the, the population of Christianity is falling and the number of lost people is growing, uh, yeah, more and more and more we're numbers wise, numbers wise, losing. I know we win, right? Praise the Lord for that. But he likes to attack the innocent. Strong or weak, doesn't matter. I'll tell you another thing about the devil. He likes to hold people down. In Acts 10.38, uh, it says uh, uh, how God anointed Jesus of, Naz Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost, with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And you can go through the Bible, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to do that this morning, you can go through the Bible and find account after account after account after account where the devil oppresses people. Amen. Right? Time and time and time again, the, the devil was has, having to get cast out of people, over, especially in the New Testament when that first thing happened. But you can go through and find it from, from cover to cover. What's he doing? Hey, listen, he's finding somebody he can get control of, and he puts them under his thumb, and he wants to keep them there and not let them go. My son, he's, you know, he's a lunatic. He throws himself in the fire. He's, right? On and on and on and on. He's been doing all these things. No one can help him. What's that? The devil got to him. He's oppressing him. And he's holding him down and not letting him go. Right? And one thing is, when you go through the Bible and you read a bunch of those accounts, one thing that kind of stands, to your, stands out in your mind as being common through a bunch of those um, uh, examples is that that individual wasn't able to get out on their own. The Lord had to do something. Hey, you and I aren't powerful enough to squelch the devil. I mean, yeah, we can resist, but that's only because God gives us the power to resist and, to, and he'll send them packing. You need the Lord, right? They need help from God. You know the, uh, the story of the, you know, sowing and, and, uh, and the good seed and the, and the tares, right? Um, and sowing in good ground and sowing in, in uh, bad ground and all the different examples of, of, of sowing and how, you know, the Lord puts something out and the devil's right there to mess with it. Take it away, flood it out, overgrow it with weeds, whatever the case is. The Lord tries to throw something down and the devil is right there just to try to overpower it. Why? Because he doesn't want us to have it. He'd just as soon have people under his thumb. Paul said this in 2 uh, uh, Corinthians, you know, lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me what? A thorn in the flesh. And then he says this, the messenger of Satan. To what? Buffet me. This is the Apostle Paul. Hey, but the Lord gave me this little thing. Uh, I'm sorry, the devil gave me this little thing. 
and it's kind of keeping me in check. Hey, the devil couldn't stop the Apostle Paul, but he certainly tried to hinder him, yes. discourage him, knock him out of the race. You see the devil hold people down in many, many, many different ways, right? Um, to sum it all up, the devil does not want people to heal or grow. Right? If you're wounded, he wants you to stay wounded. If you haven't grown, he doesn't want you to grow. Sometimes you see that in the, in the context of, you know, a husband that's, that's overbearing on his wife and doesn't want her to grow. Sometimes you see it in parents overbearing on their kids, don't want them to grow. Sometimes you see it in pastors overbearing on their congregation, don't want them to grow. Sometimes you see it a friend who's overbearing on another friend and wants to keep them, that other friend, under control. You see it, it's human nature, it happens all the time. Don't misunderstand me. I'm not against control. That's my temperament. I'm control peace guy. <laughs> right? I thrive on control. Oh, yeah. Right? They say, you're a control freak. I go, yes, I am. Doesn't bother me. Praise the Lord. The Lord gave me the peace side to kind of balance that out because otherwise it would really make a mess of things. I'm not, a, I'm not against control, but... but when you or I are in control to the point that you stunt somebody else's growth, that's not good. Right? Why? Because it's the devil that wants to keep people from healing and keep people from growing. He just wants to keep them under his thumb. Right? You and I biblically are commanded to grow. I'm looking at the time. I've got a couple more, so I'll try to hurry because I know the kids are out there. Another thing, knowing, knowing the devil, right? The devil likes to stop God's work. Wherefore, we'd have, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once uh, and again, but Satan hindered us. The devil looks out, sees the work going, and he wants to stop the work. That's how he operates, right? The devil shows up when God's work is going on, and he'll use all these tricks we've been talking about in any combination, in any number of people, as long as he can get the work stopped. I'm reading the book of uh, Nehemiah, Nehemiah, my Bible reading. I just finished Esther. I know, you're laughing at me. You're going, wait. Esther comes after Nehemiah. I know. Several years ago, I don't know how many years ago it was, but I, you, know, you read your Bible through and through and through. I got tired of reading it through and through forward. I decided, I'm going to read it backwards. I started in Revelation, worked my way back. <laughs> Here a little while ago, I was tired of reading it forward. I did it again. I, I'm going to read it backwards. So I started in Revelation, I'm back to Nehemiah. <laughs> so, so, I just got, uh, so I just got through with uh, Esther. I'm in Nehemiah. And what happens in Nehemiah? D yeah, Sanballat, Tobiah, right? They try to what? Stop the work of the Lord. Right? The devil is always looking to stop the work of the Lord. He would like for it to stop altogether. But if he can't get it to stop altogether, he will stop as much of it as he can. Hey, in 2023, we need to be careful. We need to be careful. Because... It's going to get stopped if you and I make the wrong choices. Right? He's going to turn up the pressure, turn up the heat. Uh, this, is just, this is just the enemy. This is how he works. Right? Don't stop doing the things that you're doing. Read your Bible. Pray for one another. Draw closer to the Lord. Yes, it's self-serving. Come to church. Why? It'll help you. All of those things. Live your life like a Christian. Don't be afraid to live your life like a Christian. Be bold. Stand up for the Lord. Do all the things that the Christians are supposed to do. Why? Because the devil's going to try to stop every single one of those things in your life in 2023. And he doesn't care if he can only stop, if, if the best he can do is stop one of them, he won't be satisfied, but he'll be content stopping at least one. You want to make him unhappy? Don't let him stop any of them. In fact, pick up a few more good habits along the way. 
right? Because that's what the devil does. And I think finally, finally the last one that I put down there, I could have gone on and on and on, but like I said, I didn't want to spend too much time. Um, I'll tell you what the devil does. Knowing about the devil, the devil lies. Simple fact goes without saying. You are, your, you are of your father the devil. The lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Amen. I'll tell you what the devil likes to do. The devil likes to, not, to lie. You know, normally you can, you know, have conversations and, and people, you know, they talk back and forth, they have conversations and if you ask them afterwards what the conversation was about, for the most part, I mean, there's always a hey, little memory glitches, and that, that happens. That's normal, and, you know, those things can be worked out. But, but for the most part, they, they kind of both give you the same story. Hey, this is what happened. You ever been in those conversations where you talk, and it's afterwards, you go, uh, apparently there's two of us in two different rooms talking to two different people because this is not, they're both saying this is not what happened. Hey, where does that come from? Why is that difficult? Why does that happen? There's a heck of a lot more going on than two people who just can't carry on a conversation. Right? What is that? Hey, the devil likes to speak lies. Right? I can't tell you how many times I've heard that. Please don't let me discourage you from coming for marriage counseling if you want. But m people come for marriage counseling. And you sit down with them and you talk with them and you listen to his story, you listen to her story. And you're going, I look at my wife and we, we go, man, they were not in the same room at the same time. Because <laughs> sometimes people can see things from very different perspectives, right? Right? Other times, the devil just deceives people. He puts something in your ear and you get to think in the wrong way about the conversation. He doesn't care. He doesn't care because he's the author of lies, and as long as somebody comes out of their falsehoods, he's happy and content with that. Yes. And he uses it as an attack. Knowing... Knowing the devil, listen, this pretty much sums it up <laughs> for all of us, right? I mean, I know some of you are old enough to remember the cartoon. I like the Flintstones. It's been so long since I've seen it, you'll probably go back and find a bad episode. I'm sure there are, I just don't remember. But the reality is, folks, you have to know the enemy. And how he's going to operate. You don't want to be like him, but you have to know him. All right? And we're supposed to be aware of what? The wiles of the devil. Amen. All right? Put on the whole armor of God. You may be able to stand against what? The wiles of the devil. Well, you got to know what's coming at you. All right? James 4, submit, the de uh, submit uh, yourselves therefore unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Right? That is, that is your adversary. And he shows up over and over and over and over. And unfortunately, he has great success. Even among the righteous. Right? So 2023, and I'm done. 2023, I think you and I need to make uh, a greater effort to keep the devil at bay. Right? What do I know about him? I know he's full of pride. I know his tendency is to fill your heart. I know he's around the righteous. I know he provokes. I know he attacks the innocent, both weak and strong. I know he loves to hold us down. I know he's very interested in stopping God's work. And I know that he speaks lies. I know he has the power of death, 
right? But I also know that he's going to lose in the end. But until that time, our enemy is going to keep attacking over and over and over. And folks, it is up to us to deal with those attacks. Amen. Amen. Right? And 2023 is going to be determined. A lot of 2023 is going to be determined. Uh, how good, well 2023 goes is going to be determined by how well you deal with those attacks. Amen? Amen? Let's bow our head for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you again for a chance to be here on a Sunday morning. Um, Lord, we spent an awful lot of time giving you honor and glory and praise, talking about your power and your patience and your provision and just many, many, many different things about you. And it was a, a pleasure to do that. Uh, but Father, it is also necessary. It's nowhere near as fun, it's, but it's necessary to talk about the enemy so that we know about him as well. So I pray you'd help us to take these things to heart. Uh, Father, as we start this new year, help us to be very well aware that the enemy is out there. The enemy is going to attack. And Father, we need to be on guard or we're going to get taken captive by him at his will. And he's going to have us under his thumb. So Father, give us strength, give us help. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.